All right, so I guess I watch wrestling now. That is just a thing. I have kept up with goddamn wrestling, and I guess I am now a wrestling fan. What the fuck happened? This is such a weird-ass slippery slope. I was just like, yeah, I'll watch a wrestling match. And now I'm like, woo! Fucking wrestling! Yeah! Ugh. This is my life now, I guess. So, yeah, I'm now watching wrestling. Uh, if you watched my video on uh, WrestleMania, you know, I watched that out of a curiosity, and then I decided to, like, follow up with uh, Raw and SmackDown, and now I'm just like, yeah, man, wrestling's cool! And I'm like, wrestling's cool? Oh my god, I haven't said that since, like, 2002. Weird. Now, if you're wondering why this is, like, a podcasty type format instead of, like, a vlog-style video, uh... Short answer, I'm fucking busy, alright? Like, I got, like, an actual job, and also, I'm working on, like, this big project, and I have KamehaCon, like, right on the horizon. It is a, less than a week away. I really need to try, and I really try to get this project done before I have to go to KamehaCon, so I'm really just, like, this is the only thing I can really do right now. Uh, I do plan on doing a vlog with Agro for uh, Infinity War. I have no clue when we're going to record that, but that will be a thing. Uh, we've both seen it. We've both had very positive feelings about it, but we'll we'll do a video in the near future. Until then, though, I want to do this vlog about the Greatest Royal Rumble. Not a vlog, a podcast, I guess, about the Greatest Royal Rumble because um, I had a lot of feelings. Also, I just kind of wanted to, like, chart for a lot of people my progress into WWE wrestling because like I said started off with Wrestlemania and I had like some vague idea about who a lot of these guys were and uh, after that I go and I watch Raw and Raw was not that interesting that week but I ended up going and watching Smackdown also and Smackdown was pretty fucking great uh yeah, I felt like Raw had a lot of which is way too much talking, way too much talking. Like the match, like the booking wasn't that entertaining. SmackDown, though, right out of the gate, they're like, "Page is our new general manager." Also, uh, we're gonna do uh, Daniel Bryan versus fucking AJ Styles, and I'm like, "Holy shit!" Um, all right, and like the rest of the matches for that were great too. Like I, I didn't dislike a single match that night. And there was, there was way more matches going on that week than there was on Raw. And then, you know, you just had, like, AJ Styles versus uh, versus Daniel Bryan. That was fucking phenomenal. Uh, no pun intended, because he's the phenomenal one. But, yeah, that was great. And I just kept on watching it. Like, next thing I know, I'm like, I'm watching Raw, and Raw was really good that week. And then I'm watching SmackDown, and SmackDown was really good. And next thing I know, I'm like, well, fuck, I guess I'm just, I, I'm a wrestling fan now. This is just what it is. And, like, Agro's gotten into it also. I would have done a video with Agro on this, but, like I said, I'm fucking busy. I don't really have time to, like, set up a camera and set up a, a time for us to do this. I'll just say, no, he also thought, you know, kind of the same thing. Like, you know, he was never a wrestling fan. But, like, you know, he watched that WrestleMania, really enjoyed it, decided to check out Raw and SmackDown, really liked the SmackDown, and then just kept on watching it. And he's just, he's a wrestling fan, I guess. We're both wrestling fans. And the weird thing is that this happened completely independent of one another. Like, like we watched WrestleMania together, and then independent of one another, we, we just started watching Raw and SmackDown. And, yeah. So that is just a thing. Like, I didn't even know that he was doing that. <laughs> and so I was just like, like, I go to, like, Hulu, and I'm like, oh, this has already been watched. What the hell? So, yeah. Uh, that's that, that's kind of what's been going on. Uh, a lot of wrestlers who... Like, I just never cared about before. Like, you know, when I did my WrestleMania video, uh, I now have more context for. I have a lot more appreciation for. Like, I, I, I kind of shit-talked The Miz last time. I adore The Miz. The Miz, he is he has the most punchable face. And he is just, he has really good mic skills. And he is just, you know, he's not bad in the ring either. It's just, you know, he wasn't as good as the other guys who he was with. And... Yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, Sami Zayn and uh, Kevin Owens, I couldn't give a flying fuck about. They felt like total jobbers. Uh, they, they still feel like total jobbers, but I get, I get a lot more of their personality now. And I feel like that's where they get the shine. Like, yes, they are jobbers, but they are very entertaining, fun-to-watch jobbers. All right. Anyhow, uh, you know, 
getting into this greatest Royal Rumble. Like, let me actually talk about the thing that I, I'm doing the video about. And... Uh, it was, uh, uh, was alright, I guess. Uh, okay. So, because uh, uh, after this show, uh, I was... Uh, I started, like, watching a couple of videos, like, other, like, you know, just, like, looking up YouTube videos of people talking about this event to see, kind of, gauge what the general consensus was. And the one thing I keep saying is just, like, you know, people being like, well, it's a house show. It's a house show. I need to remember, it's a house show. I need to judge it like a house show and not a pay-per-view. And I'm like, why do you have to judge it like a house show? I mean, house shows are things that aren't recorded, as far as I know. Like, they don't get televised. Here was, like, an event. Like, they have been promoting the shit out of it like it matters. And... By the by, the time the actual like greatest Royal Rumble like uh, like the, the 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 battle royale started, I I looked over at Agro and I'm like, there hasn't been a single title change this entire event. And he kind of pauses to think about it, and he goes, "Oh shit!" And I'm like, "Yeah, like the only pr- people who have won a title were uh, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, and that's because that title was had been abdicated by uh, Braun Strowman." So there was no, uh, like, you know, like, there, there was no title changes at this event. So, like, th- this event, for the most part, feels like a filler arc. Like, it doesn't actually matter. It's completely non-canon. Even though it was televised, like, yeah, I, I refer to it like, like, you know, like, like, the Battle Royale itself was fucking phenomenal. And everything else felt like the fake Namek filler. It's just... It is just there to just kind of eat up time and be a little repetitive in places and just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's filler fluff until we get to the actual canon, you know, main events. Like, you know, like Backlash. Like, that's when things are going to really be real. And this is, like I said, just a filler event. And, like, it, I feel like they, like they wanted to start this event on a really strong note. So it's just like, John Cena versus Triple H, two of the biggest superstars. Eh. Like, I was actually really looking forward to this match because I do think Triple H is a fairly good wrestler. And, like, I've always wanted, like, I've never given John Cena a fair shake. Like, I dropped out of wrestling at around 2005, I want to say. Maybe, like, early 2006. Uh... And that's, like, when, like, John Cena was really just starting to pick up. And I, I, it was way before he, like, blew into the fucking stratosphere. But <clears throat> but I never gave the guy, like, you know, like, a fair shake before. And that's what I really wanted to do here. And it was... And, yeah, this, this match wasn't very good. It was, it was fairly slow, fairly repetitive. You know, I feel like it's more of a gimmick because it's just like, Oh, shit, it's John Cena in Triple H. And I'm like, all right, but like, like they didn't have any heat going into this match. It was just like these two guys who were really popular facing each other. And there was no story leading into this. Yeah, so yeah, it, it felt like a gimmick match, like, like like almost like a charity match is what this fucking felt like. Like let's put on a good show for the kids, but then they didn't even put on a good show for the kids. Well, that's okay because it's immediately followed up by uh, the cruiserweight match, and that's uh, Cedric Alexander and Callisto and. Fuck, man, that that was a great goddamn match. And I was kind of fucking disappointed that Kalisto didn't win just because, like, Cedric Alexander is really fucking good. Um, like, yeah, and honestly, like, like my frame of reference for these guys really are just kind of, like, this match and then Cedric, Cedric Alexander's match at WrestleMania. Uh, I think that was the kickoff show, even, so he wasn't even in, like, the main match. Like, or he wasn't even in, like, the main WrestleMania. He was just in the kickoff show. And, like, you know, Cedric Alexander, you know, he was, he, he's good there. Like, he was good there, and he was good in this. And, but, like, I just feel like Kalisto is so much better. Um, like, uh, Alexander, you know, he, you know, he's definitely, like, the stronger of the two. But I was really hoping that Kalisto could, like, you know, pull that underdog shit just, you know, through, 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 like, pure, just spinny, flippy, lucha talent, you know, fucking beat this son of a bitch. Uh, but, you know, he lost, and I feel like he lost, like, in a believable way, so it's fine. It was still a f- fantastic fucking match. Like, you know, I'm not gonna say that a whole lot in this, but, like, that was a fantastic fucking match. Then you had Bray Wyatt versus and Matt Hardy versus The Bar. And <laughs> this, this was fun. Uh, you know, like, you know, this is like, like the only one where a fucking title, where someone actually won a title because no one was holding the title to begin with. 
And it was a perfectly fine match. Like, you know, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, I think, have, like, kind of good chemistry as a tag team. Like, like not so much, like, in the ring, but, like, just, like, their personalities and, like, their whole gimmick I'm really enjoying. Like, I, I haven't had enough time with Cesaro and uh, Sheamus to really develop a connection with those guys. So I was really pulling for uh, Wyatt and Hardy, and they pulled it off. They really need a tag team name. Like, you know, just, I, I don't care. Like, they, they need some kind of tag team name because just, you know, they're, they're really cool and I want to see them do more stuff together. Uh, probably for me, the highlight of the match is uh, Matt Hardy going, Delete! And Cesaro going, The Bar! Delete! The Bar! Delete! The Bar! That was great. Um, And then, after that, you have Jeff Hardy and Jinder Mahal for the U.S. title. And Jeff Hardy wins that. Oh, my God, man. Like, I remember I said, like, in WrestleMania that, like, I was, like, you know, I didn't really know who was going into this U.S. title match. And because Jinder Mahal had, like, the most flash to him, you know, his, his fucking, like, blue crushed velvet jacket and his fucking blue turban and his fucking hype man, uh, I was, I was really, like, you know, pulling for that guy because I was like, yeah, he looks like the coolest. Man, he, he is not a good wrestler. And yeah, he's not that interesting and interesting in the ring, and one of the the worst parts of this entire match. Like, cause honestly, it's not like he even was like a terrible match. It was just kind of a mediocre match, and I really feel like Jeff Hardy was the one uh, carrying the majority of the match, which is pretty sad because he's like a forty year old high flyer, so that really shouldn't be the case. But uh, you know, he he was the one carrying the match, and it was. Decent enough until, oh my god, fucking, this really just kind of goes into, like, how not good of a wrestler Jinder Mahal is, because fucking Jeff Hardy, he goes for, like, whispers in the wind, or whisper in the wind, I I don't know, I, I'm fairly new to this shit again, I don't fucking remember people's fucking moves and shit, but, uh, Jeff Hardy goes for that, and he completely whiffs, he misses him entirely, but then Jinder Mahal... After Jeff Hardy had already passed him, Jinder Mahal takes the bump anyhow. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like, Hector and I are like, and like the announced team try, try to salvage this. They're like, oh, what was that? It's like, like, I thought he missed him. Then he like, like clipped him on the edge or, yeah, and you notice that they don't do a fucking playback of that because they don't want you to see like <laughs> how he completely fucking whiffs and Jinder just falls for it. It's like when Jinder fell, I thought, like, he was dropping down with an elbow to take advantage of Hardy being prone, but that wasn't, uh, the case. You know, uh, you know, Jinder just took a bump that he shouldn't have. Uh, I really wish that they, that, that he had, um, you know, done something else. Like, you know, they were like, well, you know, that, that spot was botched. Let's try to salvage this in some way. Not just, uh, like, and just fall the fuck over. Because, like I said, like, you know, he doesn't even fall, um, like, you know, when Jeff is, like, coming down at him. He falls, uh, like, after, uh, like, he falls, like, after Jeff had already passed him. Like, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff was, like, 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 halfway between Jinder and the fucking ring mat by the time Jinder starts falling backwards. And I'm like, that was a really bad botch. Really bad botch. Um... <laughs> like, it kind of took me out of the rest of the goddamn match. I couldn't remember anything else that happened. Other than Jeff Hardy won, because of course he was going to win, because he needed to retain his title. And then you had the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos. Uh, I Usos, once again, knew nothing about them. Really, the Bludgeon Brothers I knew nothing about. But, like, the Bludgeon Brothers had a cool gimmick. And I knew that they were part of Bray Wyatt's old thing. Like, you know, that's what I knew them for. And... The Usos, I didn't know anything about. So at WrestleMania, I was just like, the Bludgeon Brothers. I like these guys the most. And then they won. They just fucking dominated. Here, the Usos uh, are going up against them. And, uh, like, I was really pulling for the Usos here. Because within that time frame, like, I've really grown to like the Usos. Like, you know, they've given them, like, a lot of personality and character. And, like, I kind of like, you know, how um, one of them, like, their wife, uh, I think it's Naomi, was coming in. And it's just like, you know... Like, distracted one of them in a match and, like, you know, led to them uh, losing, like, a singles match against one of the Usos. Uh, Lebr- Lu- one of the Bludgeon Brothers losing to one of the Usos. And, 
But yeah, no, they, they get beaten. At least here, it wasn't like the completely one-sided, like, curve stomp that it was at WrestleMania. Here, like, they really, really put up a match. Uh, I do like the fact that they're really kind of putting the Bludgeon Brothers over, but I do want to see, like, the Usos at some point kind of persevere over these, like, just titanic brutes. Um, because, yeah, that, like, they're, they're a good tag team. I've, I've really grown to, to, to like them in, like, the last few weeks. So I've gone from, like, not giving a flying fuck to being like, I, I, I want to see these guys. Like, I, I want to see these guys underdog their way and take the titles from these fuckers. I mean, I still enjoy the Bludging Brothers, but, like, I I do want to see the Usos get over on them. And then there was the Intercontinental title match. And it was uh, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and The Miz. And... This was a pretty good match. It was a ladder match. Uh, I thought it was a fairly decent ladder match. It's definitely not like the ladder matches of yore. Uh, Agro seemed to have a great time. Uh, but, like, you know, like, I, I, I need to, like, show him some of the old ladder matches from, like, the Attitude Era and, like, r- like early Ruthless Aggression and shit. Like, you know, before, like, like the ladder, ladder matches I remember. Because, like, some of those ladder matches were fucking brutal. Like, even, like, like, uh, like the stuff on Raw... Like, you know, they would play. Like, I remember those ladder matches even being pretty fucking brutal. Here, like, there's a few, like, really bad, like, brutal spots. But, um, yeah, like, like it's, it was still a, a, a fairly rock-solid match. You know, people, you know, you know, great spots here and there. Pretty good use of the ladder. Um, you know, like, Samoa Joe was just a fucking beast. And he was great. Um, like, you know, The Miz put on a good show. Like I said, I've really grown to like The Miz. Um, I would say, like, I was, if I was pulling for anybody, it was probably The Miz, because, like, I kind of like the arc he was on, but, like, I knew he wasn't gonna win the title, because Jeff Hardy won his match, and it's like, you know, they're not gonna have both the US and the IC titles on SmackDown, so, like, I was, you know, like, and I was, I was hoping, I was just like, like, maybe, maybe they're gonna pull, like, a switcheroo, and Ginger's gonna use, win the US title, and then the Intercontinental title, and they're gonna switch titles, that would be kind of different, and, and he, no, no, just Seth Rollins wins. Um, I do like the way that he won, where you have, like, Finn Balor, like, climbing up the ladder. Like, you know, he just gets done beating the shit out of, like, a bunch of dudes. And he's, <sighs> he sets the ladder up, and he's, like, trying to pull himself up the ladder. And Rollins, who had been out of the match for a while, who was, like, you know, more refreshed, comes and, like, bounces off the top rope, leaps onto the ladder, uh, climbs up it real quick, and snatches the fucking belt. And I was just like, oh, shit. Oh, that was good. That that was a really good finish to an okay match, which makes it, eh, it's fine. Then Shinsuke versus AJ, two, or technically three, because I've actually watched their Wrestle Kingdom match. A lot of people kept recommending that, so I watched that. It was, it was, you know, that that, that match was fucking phenomenal. Um, Yeah, I can understand why people were disappointed by the, uh, by their match at WrestleMania. Uh, here, I thought their match was really goddamn good for, at first. Because, you know, th- this time it had heat to it, you know. It had, you know, we had, like, a heel, like, fucking heel Ske Nakamura, man. Like, I was really getting into him. And, like, I, I kind of wish he would do something more than just, you know, punch guys in the dick. But, you know, like, I'll take what I can get. And him, he, he's just, like, like, he's so over the top that he's just absolutely fucking delightful to watch. And... Like, him and, like, you know, AJ going at it. Uh, like I said, like, you know, it's a, it's a really good match in the first part, but then I was shocked when it just ended in a double elimination. I was like, what? Like, when they rang the bell, I was just like, wait, what? And so, yeah, that was a really, really disappointing ending to that match. And then I have to, be, and then you know, like I said, I've heard people fucking you know defend this as like, well, it's a house show; they can't really switch the titles around a house show. I'm like, this is a big event that they have been fucking pushing the fuck out of, you know, like you know, me being like a newcomer into this shit, like you know, I was really, you know, and it really just feels like you know, just more build up to I guess what's going to be their actual match at Backlash. Like Backlash is going to be the end of their feud, but um. Or maybe that maybe Shinsuke will win and then the feud will continue uh, with AJ trying to get his title back. Either way, you know, like I, yeah. So the the fucking ending to this match was 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 shit. Like it's it's such a disappointing way. The only thing that made me uh, 
really like like uh, any of that was just AJ just beating the shit out of Nakamura afterwards, and I'm like, because like Shinsuke's already like really likable even as a heel. Like I feel like if Shinsuke won, like people wouldn't have cared. Like no one's gonna boo Shinsuke Nakamura because he's just such a delightful fucking character, and. Like, you know, and same thing with AJ. Like, AJ is, like, a great fucking wrestler. He's, you know, he's got a lot of personality and charisma. So, yeah, I don't think it really matters, like, you know, like, who ends up winning the title. But, yeah, I, I, like I said, uh, I, I really love seeing, like, just AJ, like, beat the shit out of him. And it almost, like, like it almost feels like, you know, AJ was almost becoming more of a heel in that moment. Like, maybe just, you know, just one too many punches to the dick, and now AJ is going to the dark side. And... Like, you know, Shinsuke is going to be the, uh, is going to end up converting into the face, I guess. Who knows? Like, you know, I, I really want to see, you know, where this goes uh, from here, at very least. Uh, I really kind of hope that they, uh, that they really keep that heat that was built up here and don't just let it dissipate until Backlash, because I really want to see them follow up on that. And then there's The Undertaker versus Rusev in a casket match, and... Man, man, oh man, I was not looking forward to this. I did not fucking care. Uh, like, I'm just like, because I knew what was going to happen. It's The Undertaker in a casket match. He's in like, and I've already been able to pick up on the fact that like, Rusev is going to job. They're not going to let Rusev go over. And I've also seen uh, some fairly positive responses. It's like, oh man, like, Rusev did really good for him, you know, all things considered, like, you know, they didn't really, like, you know, completely job him out. Uh, Undertaker, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, does, like, you know, sells a couple of things for him, and, but I'm like, no, no. Like, fucking Rusev was terrified to get into the ring with this fucking octogenarian, and, like, I hate talking shit about The Undertaker, because I really goddamn love The Undertaker, but he is not in his fucking prime. He is not what he used to be. And I think it really shows. And I kind of just want him to retire. I would like him to retire against someone like he, you know, that he has a history with. I mean, Shawn Michaels is already out of the, uh, is already retired. So it can't be him. So Kane, maybe just have like one last match between Taker and Kane. And that'll be Taker's retirement. Be a good note to end his career on. Just saying. So yeah. You know, like, him and Rusev, it was pretty much a stomp. Like, Rusev being terrified to get in the goddamn ring was lame. Him, you know, just, you know, him getting rolled to the casket in Aiden English, uh, like, like, like really early in, and Aiden English, like, keeping the casket from being closed, uh, I felt was just like, well, that, that, that was clearly just, you know, a stomp. And then, you know, Rusev gets back in, does a little bit more before actually getting put down for good, getting rolled in there, then putting Aiden English down, and then fucking rolling him in there. It's like, it just felt extra embarrassing, and, like, it, like I'm really starting to see what people talk about with Rusev, where, like, he is over as fuck with the audience, but, like, man, they will just not let this guy get over in storyline. Like, like, he's gonna just job and job and job. It's disappointing, because I have not seen him win a match, I don't think. I'm pretty sure like every match I've seen him in, he's he's lost. That's a shame because I think Rusev is really charismatic. Uh, like his his fucking hype man is great. Like I think Rusev in the ring is really good. Like yeah, just like, he has like a really good imposing look to him. And I like Rusev. I really want to, and I really really want to like Rusev. But like they just, I feel like they just don't want to do anything with him and just. Feeding him to the Undertaker sucks, man. Come on. Like, you just... <sighs> yeah, no. That whole thing was a wash. I did not like that match. It was pretty uneventful. Taker is, you know, really in his twilight years. He needs to fucking retire. I'm sure some people would argue that. Um, you know, like, you're, like last WrestleMania, like, you know, the, the announcers are like... Oh, Taker's in rare form today. And yeah, I mean, he isn't like limping and shit. But I mean, like, I, like, you know, I haven't watched wrestling in, like I said, well over 10 years. Um, so, you know, like, I, 
I remember Taker in his prime. Like, I didn't see, like, the slow de- de- degeneration of Taker over, like, the last 10 years. I just saw, like, Taker, like, really in his prime. And I really want just Taker to go out now. Like, you know, he just put him out to pasture, put two between the eyes, and just bury him for good. You know, like, Agro keeps saying, like, they need to make Taker a legacy character and just have a new Taker. You know, like, he's like, is he still, like, an undead wizard in canon? Can, can, can he just be reincarnated as, like, a different wrestler? I'd be okay with that. But, um, because, I mean, The Undertaker's still a really goofy-ass character. And, uh, then we had the, you know, Lesnar versus Roman Reigns Universal Championship. Now, I did not watch their WrestleMania match. I was really burned out by that point. I'd been watching wrestling that day for, like, five fucking hours. Uh, over five fucking hours straight. And I was just like, I am, I am so done. I just, I don't even care. And I ended up not watching it. And then I, I was going to go back to it, but I just, I didn't care enough to go back. And I heard everyone say how terrible this match was. Here, it's in a cage, and it was all right. It wasn't like noteworthy. I, I, I've heard that this match is better than their match at Mania. Um, not surprising, because it, like I said, it wasn't a terrible match. Like, it was fine. A lot of spears. A lot of, like, you know, like a lot of Superman punches. God, Superman punch is so fucking dumb. But yeah, um, it was alright. Uh, weird finish is the only thing I can say here. Like, the, 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 the tackle through the cage, like, I thought it was cool. Um, I wish they didn't, uh, like, you know, show, like, you know, replay it so much because... You could clearly see where the zip ties snapped, because like the zip ties were holding that part of the cage, and they were meant to snap, and for that part of the cage to fall, uh, fall in whenever they tackled. So yeah, like that was, you know, uh, so yeah, like like that ending was weird because uh, Roman Reigns' feet hit first, and I was just like, so like, and I couldn't tell what the hell had happened. Like, was that a botch? Because even the ring announcers note that, like, wait, like, Roman Reigns landed outside first. Like, you know, like, uh, fucking uh, Brock Lesnar, his feet are, like, still up on the cage. His feet never touched the, the mat. Like, he never touched the floor outside. You know, he was still on the cage the entire time. So was, like, was was uh, was Brock meant to, like, fall off first? And then the ref just had to, like, try to cover up for it. I didn't really understand what happened. I don't know how the hell. Like, because, like, with that kind of move, it's just like, yeah, Brock was going to land first, and then Roman was going to be on top of him. So Brock wouldn't be able to roll out from underneath Roman without Roman rolling out as well. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened here. It was a really weird call by the ref. Uh, Even the announcers uh, made note of this. So so the two championship matches, uh, you know, had really dumb, weird endings. And now, I mean, if they want to build this up now, I'm waiting to see if this actually gets followed up on. Because if this gets followed up on and Roman is like, motherfucker, my feet hit first. I should have won that title. I was fucking robbed, you piece of shit. You know, maybe they do another match. But, oh, my God. Like, like, I already don't want to see these guys wrestle again. I imagine people who have been watching this feud for a while really don't want to see these guys wrestle again. Uh, but yeah, it's, like I said, it was a fine match, weird ending, um, like, I really want to see them follow up on this at very least, just because of how the weird ending and, like, how the ruling was so weird. And yeah, so, like, that's all the the matches that, um, you know, that happened outside of the actual Battle Royale itself, and, like I said, Cena vs. Triple H, Uh, garbage, um, not really garbage, but just... Disappointing, kind of repetitive, lame. Uh, the, the cruiserweight match, fuck phenomenal. Uh, the, the the raw tag title match, that was that was pretty damn good. Uh, the U.S. title match, gender's fucking botch was lame, and yeah, like I said, it wasn't a really memorable match. The Usos and the Bludgeon Brothers had a pretty good match. Um, the ladder match, pretty good. Shinsuke versus AJ, lame ass fucking uh, way to end it. Rusev versus Taker. 
Uh, really lame, lame match overall. Uh, Lesnar versus Roman, not a very noteworthy match. It would have really weird ending. So yeah, like at this point, it's like no, it's just there's not enough good here. Also, there's like no women wrestlers here, and I was just like, and I was noting this to Agro, and I'm like, like, uh, like it's really weird. There are no women here, and he goes, they're in Saudi Arabia, and I'm like, oh son of a bitch. Oh man, fucking Saudis. God damn it. Give, give women some fucking, like, freedoms, you fuckers. God damn. Like, I know they're getting better, but fuck, man. That's a real shame, because, like, I feel like the, some of the women on that roster are just too goddamn good to leave off of major events. But whatever. So then when there's the Battle Royale. And this, this to me, was, like, the shit here. Because, like, I love this Battle Royale. It was really goddamn good. There's so many great spots happening. Really great, you know, segments here and there. Uh, some great comedy spots. Like, uh, there's those one guy. There's, like, those two guys in, uh, like, like the gay purple spandexy pants uh, with, like, the handcuff prints on them. And, man, we, I, Agro and I could not avoid just the gay jokes there. Um, like, those, those just wrote themselves. And just, like, when, like, the one guy, like, jumps out of the ring and his partner catches him. And then puts him back into the ring. And then just for him to get knocked the fuck right back out. Um, like that was okay. Like yeah. There, there's some good stuff here. I would say definitely. The MVP of this match. The MVP of the fucking night. Daniel goddamn Bryan. This motherfucker was like the Android 17. Of uh, the Greatest Royal Rumble. Except he didn't get to win it. Unfortunately. Like the fact that he came in first. And I was just like, oh, no, Daniel came in first. Like, he's not going to fucking win. And he just, he goes, and he goes, and he goes, and he goes. And, like, he just does it. Like, every time, like, something new comes in, and he's just, he just fucking takes it to them. If he's not fighting someone else in that moment, he'll just go after, like, the new person. Like, that motherfucker just would not rest. It was, it was awesome. And it opens with him and Dolph Ziggler, and... I didn't know anything about Dolph Ziggler. By the end of this, I had respect for Dolph Ziggler because he was putting on a really good show. I want to see more of this guy. Um, he was, yeah, like I said, he was cool. Uh, I got like a list of all the entrants. You know, I was like looking through it and uh, just kind of uh, see if I can collect my thoughts on this whole th thing. Because I mean, for, you know, it's a fifty-man goddamn Royal Rumble, and you know, there, there's there's just so much going on here. Uh, oh, uh, Kurt Angle was in this match, and definitely one of the best things is when Kurt and um, Daniel Bryan started going against one another. Uh, that was one of my favorite moments of this, and that makes me want to see these guys wrestle so much. Like, I, I feel like they had to have had a match in the past, but like, I mean, these guys are still like, like Kurt Angle at his age, uh, with all of his injuries and shit, is still a phenomenal in-ring talent. And Daniel Bryan, like, I never got to see him before. But, like, seeing him now, I'm like, I understand why everybody loves this guy. This guy's in-ring skills are on a whole nother fucking level from, like, just the way he moves, the way he gets out of predicaments, the way he does reversals, everything. Like, he's just, he is just one of the top talents in this business easily. Like, uh, his match that I saw at SmackDown with him and AJ Styles, like, I want to see them go at it, too. Like, I want to see them. I want to see Daniel Bryan go up against AJ Styles again. I want to see him and Kurt Angle have a, have a real match. Those guys, like, you know. Like, I, I just really want to see Daniel Bryan fucking fight everyone who I really like. Because I just think it just make for fucking amazing matches. But, yeah, so the, the, the Greatest Royal Rumble itself, you know, the Battle Royale itself, you know, it was it was a Royal Rumble. Like I mean, there's just some pretty good spots here and there. Um, well, Rey Mysterio came back. Honestly, kind of like with Taker, I didn't really want to see Rey Mysterio. Like I, he's still all right, but I really feel like you know, like Rey Mysterio is very past his prime. Like how old is he now? Forty three. Yeah, like he was forty three. His dad botting it up. Um, he cannot do a lot of the things that he used to. And yeah, just I I am okay with Rey Mysterio just stepping down. Like you know, he he, he can retire now. You know, I just I don't need Rey Mysterio because it's just kind of being like oh, because all all it is is just a reminder that like Rey Mysterio isn't as 
amazing as he was in his prime. And I feel like people are going to, like, you know, younger people are only going to remember him for shit like this and not, like, the amazing shit he did in his prime, unfortunately. Uh, oh my god. So yeah, I'm looking at this list and, oh yeah, Titus O'Neil. Yeah, I know nothing about this guy. I'm never going to forget him now because that motherfucker just slip and sliding, just poof, whoo, right up underneath that goddamn ring apron. Oh my god. God, that was the funniest shit. And fucking, um, just the fucking announced team, they just, they played it over and over and over again, losing their shit. That is this man's career. He will never be known for anything else ever again. Like, I feel bad for this guy, because no one is ever going to remember this guy for doing anything other than, you remember that time at the Greatest Royal Rumble where you slip and sled under, like, I, I, would just, I bet this motherfucker wishes this had been a house show, because if it were a house show, nobody would have known except for the people at the fucking attendance, and a lot of people would have even missed it, because, you know, they would have been watching the in-ring shit. So yeah, just, oh my god, Titus O'Neil just... Woo! Up underneath that goddamn ring. It was so fucking funny. Oh my god. Uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah. Oh, motherfucker won this shit. He was, he was great. Oh my god. Like, like, I, Braun Strowman feels like an actual indestructible monster. Like, yeah, he's sick a lot. Like, like, I feel like they really tried to, like, push Roman Reigns and, uh, Brock Lesnar as that. Like, you know, these guys are just so fucking tough. Braun Strowman feels like that guy. Like when you just see him like 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 run around a ring apron and he just steamrolls over guys. Like he just he he's fast, he's pretty rock solid in the ring. Um you know, he's like a big dude who doesn't feel like slow and lumbering and shitty like a lot of these bigger guys do. Yeah, he's just you know, like I I really like Braun Strowman. You know, he's got a lot of intensity to him. He's just, he's just a fun fucking guy. Like, I, I want to see him do more. Like, the fact that he won this is pretty great. I don't know what the hell that means for his career. I mean, he got himself a cool green belt. I hope he actually wears that, like, uh, whenever he comes back to Raw. Like, that would be pretty neat. But yeah, no, like, he's just got a, he got a really cool trophy, and it was great. Um, oh my god. Yeah, the great Kali showed up in this. Ugh, talk about someone I didn't want to fucking see again. Uh, that's my feelings on the great Kali. I'm just glad he was out early. Because I was really worried. Like When he came in, like, so late, I'm like, no, 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 no. Not the great Kali. I swear to God, man. Because, like, like, if the great Kali fucking just, you know, starts taking people out. Like, takes out anybody I'm liking in this match. I'm going to be really fucking upset. And he didn't. He didn't. So, wasn't too bad. You know, he, like, fucking chops three people in the head and gets tossed the fuck out. Good. You know, honestly, I wish there was less of him, but whatever. And then, uh, second to last, you have Big Cass. And, oh my god, fucking, fucking Big Cass, like, near the end there, like, fucking takes out the... Because, honestly, I was really, like, like really, like, uh, pulling for uh, Daniel Bryan. I'm like, oh my god, is Daniel Bryan gonna fucking do this shit? And Daniel Bryan, like, he comes... Like, he, like, he's, like, in, like, the last four, I think, in that ring. He started at number one. And just Big Cass just tosses his ass out. And I was like, man, if Big Cass wins this, I'm going to be really disappointed. Like, this better be Braun Strowman. Because it was down to those two by that point. And I'm like, if this... If if Braun Strowman loses to Big Cass... Because I don't like Big Cass. Like, I haven't had enough time to have any opinion on him other than, like, he just talks a lot of shit. And he, like, you know, just like, I'm really tall and big and I could beat people up and that's my character. Couldn't give a fuck. Could not give a fuck at all. So, yeah, there's that. And he throws out Daniel Bryan. That was a shame. And uh, Chris Jericho was the last guy in. Um, Chris Jericho dad botting it up. <laughs> like a lot of these guys that, you know, at this point that I grew up watching. Um, does a couple of things. You know, uh, I think, what was it, did you think Walls of Jericho, uh, Kevin Owens, because, like, they had some heat? Yeah, that was fun. You know, but yeah, he gets thrown out after three minutes or so. It was fine. But yeah, uh, Big Cass tossing out, like, like the, the only thing with Big Cass tossing out uh, Brian Daniels, I think, like, to benefit from this is that I guess they can go into their, 
backlash match with a bit more heat behind him. Like Big Cass gets to be more of a smug asshole than he than he even was before. And, you know, Daniel Bryan can uh kind of come in and, you know, you know, like, you know, like really be like the underdog in that match. I, I really kinda wish it had gone differently. Like maybe have like Big Cass uh get chucked out by Braun Strowman and then or like have Big Cass take out Braun Strowman and maybe have uh, Daniel Bryan take out Big Cass or something like that and have Daniel Bryan win, but eh, I'll take what I get. Especially because, you know, like, that would have just had real, like, Big Cass, like, really fucking angry. Like, you could have had a really, you know, saying, like, oh, Daniel Bryan, like, you know, he was good enough to toss him over a rope, but he wasn't good, he isn't good enough to actually beat him in a fight, and blah, 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 blah. You know, you could have had that whole angle. Uh, I'm assuming from here they're just gonna, um, you know, have him be, the, uh, I guess from, like, here on, they're just gonna have him like be like really smug, like yeah, I beat Daniel Bryan in the Greatest Royal Rumble, a guy who had been wrestling for like over a goddamn hour straight. I beat him. I threw him out of the fucking ring. But yeah, no, like, the, the the Greatest Royal Rumble, like that battle royale was fantastic. There's some great storytelling here. Um, fucking Daniel Bryan. Um, like I'm gonna keep talking about Daniel Bryan because he was just so fucking good in this. Like all the best fucking moments really were involved him. I feel. Um, like, there are some other good moments, but, like, I feel like just, like, my favorite moments were just him. Like, when he was, I think it was, uh, Braun Strowman and, was it, uh, Bobby Lashley? Um, and, uh, fucking Daniel Bryan's going, just corner to corner, drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, drop kick, drop. I'm like, fucking shit. Like, he is just going for it, just being a guy. Like, he had been in the ring for so long, and he still had that much energy in him. Oh, God, he's just like, yes! Fucking awesome. It was so good. And, um, oh, that just reminded me of the memorable moments, like, thinking about Bobby Lashley. Because I think it was Bobby, Bobby Lashley, the guy who picks people up and, like, holds them and shows how strong he is. And he tried to do that to Big Cass. And he just kind of ended up dropping Big Cass on his fucking head. I was just like, oh my god. Like, even Agro was just like, I think Big Cass is just dead. <laughs> like, I think he's seriously hurt. The fact that he got up surprised the shit out of me. Because I really, I'm like, oh man, I think Big... Because he dropped fucking Big Cass on his head. And the ring announcers you know, played off like it wasn't a big deal. But, like, I was waiting for Big Cass to actually get the fuck up and do something. Because I was just like... it. Is he paralyzed? I don't know. Like, cause that's that that was a really dangerous. Like, you know, Bobby Lashley should not have followed through on that move. Like, you know, yeah, it just, yeah, that that just looked really bad. Like, he needs to really fucking learn his limits and who he can and cannot do that shit to. Cause Big Cass is a guy he cannot do that shit to. Big Cass is too big. Big Cass is too fucking heavy. Uh, that was a really dangerous fucking spot. And it was really fucking stupid of him. Like, whenever he tried to do it the first time and he couldn't get him up. And then he tried to do it a second time. It's like, no, no, you said no. You're, that was dumb. That was really bad. Uh, but yeah. Um, like I said, just... Like I said, like Daniel Bryan had all my favorite moments. Like I said, envy fucking P of this goddamn thing. Other people were great. There was lots of great moments throughout. Um... You know, like Elias being like a little pussy and staying out of the ring most of it, and then uh, like just getting tossed out uh, by Bobby Lashley. That was that was good stuff. Like I said, so some good comedy spots here and there, and yeah, it was just it was like I said, really good in ring storytelling. Uh, I I really liked this battle royale. Um, like afterwards, I had tweeted out like greatest Royal Rumble greater than Tournament of Power. Uh, to which Geekdom was just like, bro, that that event was dog shit or whatever. And I was just like, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the Battle Royale. <laughs> like, very simply the Battle Royale. Like, I'm not going to defend this whole fucking uh, uh, special. Like, like I said, there, there are matches I liked. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I really only cared about the, the, the Royal Rumble match itself. Which I thought was pretty damn great. I was never bored. Uh, it was just a great time. So, yeah. I guess I'm just going to do one of these every time there's, like, a big event and probably give my opinion on, like, how I felt about the matches leading into them, like, the storylines leading in. Uh, I'll probably bring Aggro in for these and do, um, like, more vlog-type videos. Like I said, I couldn't do a vlog right now because I don't have time to, like, set up a camera and do all that shit and deal with footage. 
audio is much easier to just fucking just put put together and fucking just toss a couple images in and just fucking call it a day. So yeah, uh, that was it. Talk to you next time. If you're gonna be at KamehaCon, I'll be at KamehaCon. I have a panel. Oh my god, I need to fucking prepare for my panel. I haven't fucking done that yet because I've been too busy with other bullshit. Fuck!